Good morning and welcome to Blackstone Chronicles, broadcasting from Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world, but then you two are at the center of the world. The title of this morning's talk is, uh, Let's Go to the Movies. Remember, uh, what was Siskel, Siskel and uh, Egbert or whatever, those, those two great uh, uh, movie uh, commentators who were rubbing together to create a great show, you know, in their in in their conflict, you know, of their pers of their viewpoints, uh, it was such a great thing. Anyway, let's go to the movies, because um, that is one thing we all have in common, uh, no matter what our politics or our religion, our uh, non-religion or whatever, uh, we all go to the movies, uh, and if not to the movies, to the uh, little movie on the TV screen. Or if not that, well, then in the little movie on our cell phone. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, what Aristotle talked about this. I mean, that, of course, for Aristotle, there were no movies. There were plays, drama. And what's necessary for us to enjoy a drama, a play, or a movie is what's called the suspension of disbelief. And it's kind of a tricky word. I, I, have, I have trouble uh, getting a little handle on it because it's kind of, uh, it's not quite clear. Uh, suspension of disbelief. Something has to be suspended in order for us to enjoy the movie. Now, we know if you go to a movie, it's a ritual. You go in, you get your popcorn, you find your seats, you chit chat, or you sit there and you look around at the other people coming and going. And there's a little bit of, uh, and maybe they play some commercials, you know, because they've got, you know, you got to look at something. And uh, there's a tension building up. And then the lights go dim. And then the movie comes up. Ta da! And right there, um, you suspend your waking state, which is sitting around in the theater, as if you were, as if the theater was a movie. It's kind of like you're sitting in the theater, in this waking me, and you're talking to things, other people who are things, or you're looking at things, but everything is out there. The person next to you is over there, and you're kind of like located as if you were a camera on a tripod. You know, if you, you remember, uh, the, uh, I used to be a, we a, a wedding videographer, and before there was, if you, you just have a VCR, and you would go to the wedding, and you would turn it around and look at everything, and then, uh, but, but the camera was located in a position. So whatever you looked at, it was like being on a ship in a plate of, of reality that went from horizon to horizon. You see, on a ship, you're at this location and you, and you see the horizon is like a plate around you. But you're moving, so the plate is moving. <laughs> you see. But you're located. Everything is from your location. So when you're, before the movie starts, the world is a panoramic screen around you. You can, you can turn your head and look at the back of the movie. You can look at the projection booth. Uh, uh, remember? I remember. Maybe you don't, but uh, in movies you used to be able to smoke, and everybody was smoking, and you'd look up, and the smoke revealed the projection light. You don't see the projection light now because nobody smokes. Anyway, I digress. So the point is that when you're in your waking mind, you're at the center of the world, and you look around if you if. If your neck, if your neck was disconnected, you could look all the way. You know, movies do this. You just look around, you know, 
and you see the whole room, the whole theater, as if it were a plate. But you're at the center. So then the movie lights go down. And what goes off? Your waking mind goes off. Your camera goes off. Your camera mind goes off. And now you're in the movie. And you suspend the disbelief in the movie. Is that right? Don't you suspend? Oh, you suspend. You suspend disbelief that the movie is false. That's it. You suspend disbelief. Because see, disbelief is this is not real. But that, you see, now if you, if you go back to a movie with me and you're in the movie and somebody pokes you, hey, what time is it? What? You turn, angrily perhaps, irritated, oh, just leave me alone, I'm watching the movie. Or somebody's talking behind you. So they keep reminding you, people talking, they keep reminding you of your now, let me get this right. They keep reminding you that the movie's not real. We have a friend who come, we watch movies or TV, she comes over and she comments on the movie all the time through the movie. Like, oh, I wouldn't do that. Well, that is stupid. Why did that person do that? I wouldn't have done that. So she's constantly breaking the suspension. So you get into this flip-flop, I'm in the movie, then I'm back. So you're constantly flipping, flopping between, between two viewpoints, two worlds, two minds, two realities. One mind is sitting at a location in a room that you believe is real. And the other mind, when that one is suspended, is in the movie where you have no location except the viewpoint that the movie gives you. See, we watch them. If you ever watch a movie from the tactical point of view or commercials, the viewpoint is constantly shifting. The viewpoint only lasts about three, five seconds, ten seconds, longer. Now, the director knows how to manipulate that. The director knows how to manipulate the viewpoint to capture your suspension of disbelief. Because if, if it were sustained, like old movies or wedding videos, the viewpoint never shifts. I remember when I was doing what well, we were so excited because we got VA and editing uh, Stu uh, and that, uh, we found, we bought, we had to borrow the money to buy it. It was, I think, $1,400 to buy this video editing suite where you could take two videos and, and make a new, and switch the viewpoints so that you had a final viewpoint, a final wedding video where you could shift the viewpoints. And the viewpoint, shifting the viewpoint, sustains attention. You get bored with one viewpoint. You go watch an old wedding video and you're just watching people standing around eating. <laughs> you know, you, you, you can't suspend disbelief there. You can't get sucked into it. You're all, oh, well, this is boring. You know, and you start looking at your watch. How long are we going to have to sit here, you see? So the shifting of viewpoints cleverly keeps our attention tension and the suspension of disbelief so that we can remain in the movie and forget our waking movie that's watching it, which is always one viewpoint, you see. So um, we go to a movie, suspend disbelief, and we enjoy the movie depending on how deep our suspension was. In other words, we enjoy the movie 
to the degree that we can pretend the movie is real. And we would not enjoy the movie unless we could pretend it's real and forget that it's not real. And, and whenever anybody disturbs you, hits your butt, asks for popcorn or whatever, there's an irritation because the, the dream is broken and you flip back into a waking dream, if you will. So a great movie doesn't break that suspension. Now, let's see where we're going to go with this. But the, but the point is, there are really just two movies here, two realities. There's one in the movie that you suspend your belief in your self, your mind, as seeing the, as the theater is real and pretend you are in the movie reality. And then the movie reality, a good movie, will take you through steps of realization. In other words, the conclusion of the movie is the hero's realization of a dream. So the hero is caught in a contradiction, in a dream, in a mystery. Who did it? He's got some tension. He's got some contradiction. It's a mystery to solve. Some pain to be forgiven. You know, some release, some catharsis, Aristotle said. So when you really suspend your disbelief, you go through, you surrender to the catharsis of the movie and go from uh, pain to realization. When the conflict is resolved, the lovers get together, the treasure is found, everybody goes home happy, having gained something, treasure, wisdom, realization. At the end of uh, uh, Last Crusade, uh, when the quest for the grail had collapsed and the whole thing fell apart and, and uh, Indiana Jones and his father rode away and said, so what did they ask uh, Sean Connery, what did, you, what did you get? And he said, wisdom, and he rode away laughing. <laughs> you know, so, okay, so that's the jewel in the crowd when you get wisdom. Uh, okay, so you, so you get the idea, so we come back to our waking movie world where I am the camera on a tripod looking around at the world, you know, and then I move, I go outside, and now I'm in the street world. I'm still my one camera. I'm looking around and the street's real and, uh, you know, I look at my watch, oh, I got an appointment and I got a, the, my schedule is real and all the things that I as a character I'm going to do in my movie. <laughs> but I believe it's real. But I feel kind of good now that having had a little vacation from that movie by going in the movie reality. For a couple of hours I didn't have the tension of my world. For a couple of hours I was released from the worry of my world. I was released from the worry of my hero, my character, my me. I had a little vacation. We love that. <laughs> and we go back into the world and we got our plot. We got our storyline. And we find we lack way anyway. But you see the point here? Two worlds. <clears throat> no, we enjoy one world because we can suspend the disbelief, but we don't enjoy the other world because we cannot suspend disbelief. We enjoy the movie because there's a background awareness that I know this is not real. So if the hero dies, I'm not going to die. But we go into the movie and that background awareness is not there. So if I die, I'm going to be terrified. <laughs> 
See, in other words, death is real out here in the real world. I can die. The hero can die, you see. I can't pretend. That background awareness is gone in the real world. But in the movie, the background awareness that I'm that that this is a pretend world, a dream, keeps allows me to enjoy the world. But I go to my regular world, I can't enjoy it. Oh, I get moments of enjoyment, but mostly I don't. <laughs> Mostly, I'm anxious to get out of it to get on, to get somewhere where I'll be better. I'm always anxious to get a little relief from the worry and the tension of my movie because, you see, I believe it's real. I cannot suspend disbelief. Now, the awakening of Buddhism actually is the awakening of that background awareness in the world that allows you to be in the world without being afraid of the world. So we're in the movie, you see, enjoying the movie, because we're not afraid of the movie. I'm not afraid that I'm going to die in the movie. But I go in the real movie world, I'm afraid I'm going to die. You see? But basically, these two movies, the movie on the screen and the movie on the street and my house here and all that, are both movies in the sense that they are projections on a screen. The projection on the screen of the movie is right there, and we, we don't really see the screen. You see, we don't, we don't, and we don't see the light unless somebody smokes. But in the real world, we don't see the light either. We don't see the light of my awareness that's projecting this world upon the screen of my mind. But if I were to see that projection light, the light of knowing, while I'm in my waking world, bam, there would be a sudden awakening of the knowing that this world I'm in is not absolutely real. It appears as if it were real, and I can pretend it's real, and I can enjoy the world, and I can really enjoy the world if I know it's not real, that I'm not going to die. You see? I hope you see. Thanks for dropping in. <laughs> Let's go to the movies.